Hello, my fantastic expository nonfiction readers. I want us to take a second before we start our lesson today to think about all we have learned about expository nonfiction. First, we learned how to say that big word. Can you say it with me? Expository nonfiction. We also did picture walks. We looked at the covers and the book descriptions. We found some good fit books and we got a collection assigned to us on Oregon's flora and fauna. We learned those words, flora and fauna. The list just keeps going on. We've learned so much about expository nonfiction. So this week we're gonna keep learning about the parts of expository nonfiction. Because if we remember, remember back, Expository nonfiction, its job is to teach us, the readers, <coughs> its job is to teach us something. So everything that's in expository nonfiction is put in there to help us, the readers, learn from the books. So today we're going to be learning about another text feature, um, and it is called the table of contents. So just like all of our other reading lessons, you're going to want to make sure you are ready with your reader's notebook and something to write with. If you don't have that now, go ahead and pause the video and go get it and then come back when you are ready. Okay, so we are gonna set up our page before we start reading because we're gonna flip to a new blank page. Look at, let's, while we do it, let's look through all of this sketch noting that we've done together so far. Look at that. Do you remember all of these? Okay. There we are. We are on our next blank page and we are going to call this one. Remember, we are learning about the table of contents. And I'm going to put my bubble around it because that's how I like to title mine. Maybe you like to do it a different way, have a different banner, but that's my favorite nice easy banner to do. And we always write the title of the book that we are going to be looking at. Um, and the title of today's book is Plant Life Cycles. So I'm gonna make sure that I have that written too. And remember if the video is going too fast or anything for you and you wanna slow it down, you can keep pausing it as many times as you want to. That's one of the awesome things about online learning is that it is all up to you. Okay, so we've got our page titled and I'm gonna pull up the book in just a second. But before I do that, I want you to take a second and picture this word, table of contents. Have you ever heard that before? Does it sound familiar? Take a second and think about that. All right, readers, I've got an example of a table of contents pulled up on the screen right now. And this comes from the book, Science Lab, The Life Cycle of Plants. And just like we learned last week, I think it's always helpful to read the book description. And in this case, the book description is, this book explains the life cycle of plants. Pretty straightforward. So then we're gonna look at our table of contents. What I want you to notice first is where is the table of contents located? It is like in the, right at the beginning of the book. So I'm gonna put a little, add that to my sketch note. I'm gonna put at the front of the book. Just so I can remember where it's at. Uh, and I'll show you this big at the end, but I just like to write that so that I can remember where that I can find this text feature table of contents. Now I'm gonna keep it up on the screen for a little bit and you can pause it if you wanna do this for even longer. But I want you to take a second and find what you notice about the table of contents and what you wonder. What do you notice and what do you wonder? Something that helps me while I'm doing this work of thinking about what I notice and what I wonder is I like to draw out a little sketch note of what I'm seeing and it helps me to think about what I notice and what I'm wondering. So I'm just gonna draw a little bit of what I see on here in my sketch note. Maybe you wanna, you should do that too to think about what you notice and what you wonder. So first I notice that it says table of contents at the top, really big and clear in this one. And then I notice that there are some words, I'm gonna write them down. 
Then there's some dots like this, and then there's a number. Hmm, now I'm gonna see if the next one, I wonder if the next thing is the same way. It looks like it is, so I'm gonna write that one down too. Hmm, and something I wonder, did you notice? I wonder why the same number is on the first and the second line. Now I'm gonna write the next one. How a plant grows. And then there's those same dots I'm noticing. And now there's a different number. I wonder why that number is there. So I'm gonna keep looking at it and I notice that all of this is following that same way. It's all going words, dots, and then a number. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a second so that it makes my um, sketch noting bigger if you wanna go ahead and copy down what I have. And while you do this, think about what you notice and what you wonder about the table of contents. What do you already know about the table of contents? What are you still wondering? Okay, I'm gonna go back to the book, but if you are still catching up, you can pause the video here and catch up. Okay, so I'm gonna keep thinking about the table of contents, but I'm gonna start reading the book and then go back to the table of contents. So on this first page, do you see anything that you notice? Any connections that this page might have to the table of contents? So it says, your mission. Remember we learned about headings? Something that I noticed right away, who else noticed this? Something else I noticed right away is that there are two headings on this page. If you find them, they are your mission and what you know. Your mission and what you know. Does that sound familiar? So your mission. All plants from the tiniest weeds to the tallest trees go through similar stages of life. They move through these stages in some of the hottest, coldest, driest, and wettest places on earth. Your mission is to find out how scientists study the life cycle of plants. What kind of experiments help them understand how plants survive in tough places? What kinds of questions do they ask? Read the facts in what you know, and then start your mission to discover the life of plants. And then we're on our next heading what you know. Every green plant needs the same things to survive. Sunlight, air, water, and room to grow. The parts of a plant work together. Roots soak up water, leaves make food from sunlight, the stem carries food and water to the rest of the plant. Wow, this is a lot of really good stuff to sketch note. Maybe while I'm reading this page, you'll want to turn to your next blank page and make a new sketch note. I'm gonna keep reading. And then we're gonna go back to the table of contents. Many plants make flowers. The purpose of a flower is to make seeds. Seeds are the offspring of plants. Mushrooms are a type of fungus. Both mushrooms and plants grow in the ground, but they are different. Plants make their own food from sunlight. Mushrooms do not. And then this right here, this caption on the picture says water lilies make their way through mud and water before blooming above the surface. So now that we've read the first page, I'm wondering if there's anything you notice about this first page and the table of contents. Is there anything you notice? Something super awesome that I noticed was that the captions, your mission, and what you know those captions were also on our table of contents. Did anybody else notice that? So we're seeing that the words are the headings in the rest of the book. So I'm gonna add that. Now that I figured that out, I've realized that what the words that we're seeing there, they are a heading. So I'm gonna put a heading and the dot, dot, dot. And then we still have that number. We're still trying to figure out what that number is for. So let's go back to our page and see if we can find that number anywhere. Do you see why that number might be there? Yeah, the number is down here. 
it is the page number. So it is telling us that the your mission heading and the what you know heading are both on page four. So that's why we had our page number, number four. That's why we had it twice here because they're both on the same page. So if I go back to my table of contents, that's telling me that what we're seeing here, what we are seeing here is a heading. And then what we are seeing over here are page numbers. So then I'm going to add that to my sketch note because we noticed that. We have our heading and then it's followed by some dots and then it tells us the page number where we can find that heading. So now I want you to take a second. I always like after I do a sketch note, sometimes on the page next to it, what I like to do is I like to write big idea. Because I have my sketch note, but I'm going to want to remember when I go through my reader's notebook later, I'm going to want to remember what the big idea, why I drew this sketch note. So I want you to take a second. I'm going to pull mine in so that you can think. I want you to take a second and write, what do you think the big idea is about a table of contents? What do we use a table of contents for? What is its job? That's what we're writing about for the big idea. So what is the job of the table of contents? Take a second to write that. I'm going to do it too. So excited to see what you write whenever you turn these in on Seesaw. Okay, are you ready? If you're not ready yet and you're still writing, you can pause so you don't hear my answer yet. So I said that the big idea is that the table of contents tells us where to find headings in a book. So that is the job of the table of contents. That's why, what my big idea was. So now it's your job to go into your Oregon flora and fauna book collection on Epic. And you are going to find, look through your books um, that you have in the books that you're reading today and look for the table of contents and see that the headings, see if the headings and the page numbers match. Maybe yours looks the same as the one we drew. Maybe it looks a little bit different and there's something you want to sketch note about that. But I want to see some of your sketch noting for today. One of the things that you're going to turn in for your sketch note is you are going to send in a picture of this page. And you are also going to turn in um, another example um, of sketch noting that you have done. So you want to make sure that you have done a table of contents page like this because you will be turning it in on Seesaw. So awesome job readers. I think it is so cool that we are learning about all the ways that expository nonfiction helps us to learn. And now we have another tool, the table of contents, that helps us to learn about our topic by sh showing us how our book is organized. You guys are becoming such awesome expository nonfiction readers. Great job. See you on Seesaw.